A surprise hearing on Capitol Hill offered dramatic testimony of events that led to last year's January the 6th riots at the congressional compound by Donald Trump's supporters and fresh revelations that sent shockwaves across the country. On Tuesday, the House of Representatives Select Committee investigating the Capitol riots called that surprise hearing where Cassidy Hutchinson, an aide to Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, was the star witness. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Testifying under oath, Cassidy Hutchinson broke down the events that led to the Capitol siege. She says that the event was in planning and that White House officials knew something was brewing on the 6th of January. Cassidy hinted at one of her conversations with Trump's former attorney, Rudy Giuliani. He was scrolling through his phone. I remember leaning against the doorway and saying, I had an interesting conversation with Rudy, Mark. Sounds like we're going to go to the Capitol. He didn't look up from his phone and said something to the effect of, there's a lot going on, Cass, but I don't know. Things might get real, real bad on January 6th. Hutchinson said that on the day of the attack, Donald Trump latched on the drivers, asking them to take him to the Capitol. Where I overheard the president say something to the effect of, you know, I, I don't effing care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me. Take the effing mags away. Let my people in. They can march to the Capitol from here. Let the people in. Take the effing mags away. While the former president continued with his temper tantrums, there was the former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, who chose to let the unruly and violent crowd carry on, despite being warned of the bloodbath that could follow. And I remember Pat saying to him something to the effect of, the rioters have gotten to the Capitol, Mark. We need to go down and see the president now. And Mark looked up at him and said, he doesn't want to do anything, Pat. And Pat said something to the effect of, and very clearly <laughs> had said this to Mark, something to the effect of, Mark, something needs to be done or people are going to die and the blood's going to be on your effing hands. This is getting out of control. I'm going down there. She mentioned the efforts put by Trump's close ones, his family members, who urged him to give out a statement to calm the rioters down. I remember her saying at various points, you know, she wants him, she wanted her dad to send them home. She wanted her dad to tell them to go home peacefully and she wanted to include language that he necessarily wasn't on board with at the time. Ending this blockbuster testimony, Hutchinson said watching the events unfold was devastating to say the least. I remember feeling frustrated, disappointed, and really, it, it felt personal. I, it was really sad. As an American, I was disgusted. It was unpatriotic. It was un-American. We were watching the Capitol building get defaced over a lie. Now, while that hearing was underway, former President Donald Trump was posting his reaction on his own social media platform, Truth Social. Trump claimed that he does not really know Cassidy Hutchinson, but said he had heard negative things about her. He called her a phony, a leaker, a third grade social climber, and in perhaps his only accurate comment, branded her bad news. For more on the story, we're joined today by Weon's US correspondent Susan Terrani, live from New York. And Susan, there's absolutely no question that Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony was indeed bad news for Donald Trump. But we should underscore that many of the assertions she voiced yesterday, not all of them, but some of them, were not based on her own first-hand witnessing of the events that she was describing. Right. And if she was in a court of law, a lot of it would have been tossed out. It made for very good television on the one hand. And on the other hand, you know, 
um, if Donald Trump decides to run again in 2024, Republicans could maybe look back at the parts that are her first hand account and make their own decisions. But, you know, much of her testimony as this committee has been, uh, for the most part, is to show Donald Trump was unhinged after he lost the elections. OK, now what? And what stood out in her testimony and made headlines for a few hours until it was debunked was the fact that uh, Donald Trump tried to grab the steer steering wheel um, in his limo uh, and drive the car himself, which sounds preposterous and in its own way when you think about how that would even be possible. But she made those claims and immediately after the testimony, those claims were debunked not only by the Secret Service, but Trump's uh, personal driver as well. That was a secondhand account. Um, the Secret Service and Trump's personal driver have been cooperating with the January 6th committee. Um, they said that they will testify under oath to say that this account by Cassidy Hutchinson was not accurate. So um, did the January 6th committee know it wasn't accurate and they put her on the panel? That's a question, unfortunately, that was not cross-examined because there's no um, other Republicans on the panel to be able to cross-examine her. Another issue, just really quickly, was a note that she talked about that she said she allegedly hand wrote a note for Donald Trump to perhaps make a statement after January 6th. That was debunked again by former White House lawyer Eric Hirschman. He said that the handwritten note was not that of uh, Cassidy Hutchinson, but rather it was his handwritten note and said that um, all law enforcement and anyone involved can prove that he's also willing uh, you know, to cooperate with the January 6th committee and testify under oath. So, you know, this leaves the door open to other claims that she made. OK, so let's talk about other potential witnesses that the committee is trying uh, to pull in. Uh, Liz Cheney said last night, and, and it's important to underscore, the only two Republicans on this committee are dissident Republicans, uh, absolutely ostracised by the rest of the party. But Liz Cheney said last night the committee wants to question uh, Pat Cipollone, who was the White House legal counsel uh, in the Trump administration and who, in Ms. Hutchinson's telling of events, was issuing very dark warnings warnings about the legal jeopardy uh, in which the president and others were placing themselves over the events of January the 6th. He really could provide some smoking gun testimony if he turns up, right? Many Americans agree that if there was a smoking gun, we could have seen it by now. This committee just seems to be an extension of the second impeachment trial of Donald Trump. For the most part, uh, what we've seen has not been a really serious debate on what really happened on January 6th uh, for the large part and the horrible events that happened and how to prevent it again. It really seems like a hit job on Donald Trump, his uh, inner circle, and how to prevent him from running again. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see. And on the other hand, you know, as you mentioned, the problem with this committee is for many, it's not a credible messenger because there are no other Republicans to cross examine these witnesses. And what we're seeing is bits and snippets of either pre recorded testimony or live testimony that. Um, you know, is, is not being cross-examined. So we'll wait and see whether or not we finally see some kind of smoking gun. But if, if we're banking on any of this evidence right now from the January 6th committee to be used uh, by the attorney general, uh, it's, it's just not going to happen. There is no hard evidence at this point. And Susan, very briefly, let's talk about the allegations that were voiced at the very end of Tuesday's hearing about witness tampering. Those could pose a real problem for the Trump team. Right. Again, it, it just depends on whether or not it's not going to be hearsay once again, whether or not. Um, you know, uh, there's going to be any hard evidence and it's not going to be, again, you know, playing on what's happening with um, uh, the narrative that 
quote unquote, Donald Trump was unhinged. So um, we'll have to see if there is any evidence that Attorney General uh, Merrick Garland can really work on. At this point, you know, so far, um, legal experts say that hasn't been the case. Susan Terrani, live for us once again, as ever, in New York. Weon's U.S. correspondent, thanks for being with us again today.